Hey up lads and lasses, Danfire here, back again with some more Infinite Lagrange. Again, we are carrying on with the Destroyers and we'll just jump straight into it. So we are now on the Aldebra. So, unfortunately I only have the one, but I can cut, you can kind of see the blueprint here and I'll tell you a little bit about it. Uh, but yeah, the generic Aldebra. To front row ship, it's got pretty good DPM and reasonable tank as well uh, considering you know you're sitting at a base armor of 30 the armor system like buffs up quite nicely with more physical resistances however not what i'd recommend i'd still recommend the hp front row ships defense first otherwise you're just losing the base dpm when they die anyway so you might as well try and get them to stick around for as long as possible get that dpm out first before you get the extra dpm on them in this case Picking up the double HP here and one of the armor will help its survivability quite considerably. This thing doesn't have uh, any dodge rate, I believe, as a generic base thing. It's just got the generic vector engine. Um, so yeah, it's pretty much, well, it's got the base destroyer dodge rates, I guess, but it's not got any increases like the Taurus has. So this does get hit on the front line quite a lot. So just keeping it alive is quite difficult. Um, in this regard, I do prefer the Taurus over it as that front line, front row tank sort of, off tank sort of position. But needless to say, this thing does have considerably good damage output. So once your armor is in a nice position, move over to your fortress battery systems and start just jumping this up, uh, damage up. The focus fire, I don't personally like, although it's semi needed in some situations. You can ignore it though, and in my personal experience, ignoring it has done well for me in the past, but bear in mind we are using cannons here. So first off, highly recommend grabbing both, uh, sorry not both, just the one hit rate against the frigates, destroyers. You can ignore the fighters, corvettes, the anti-aircraft weapons on this don't particularly do well, uh, so you can ignore that. Then picking up the extra, just the flat cannon hit rate. So you got your two cannon hit rates. I then recommend here, because you got so many slots anyway, because you're not gonna be taking the strategy, you can pick up the double cooldown and a double damage mod. And it's gonna do some work here, because you got a base damage per hit of three, uh, 350, which means that 10% buff is gonna be a 35% buff and it's stacking. So you're gonna be hitting like 400-ish damage out of these things, a little bit over that even. Um, but that's just with the two damage mods and then the increased cooldown is gonna help out quite nicely because the cooldown is 16 seconds here. So getting that increased cooldown is gonna help uh, cycle those shots out a little bit faster and it's gonna help your DPM quite nicely. You can drop one cooldown for the extra damage mod. I don't personally recommend it. The extra damage is nice, it gives it a bigger alpha hit. Uh, and it can, you know, effectively hit certain targets quite well. But the extra cooldown for me personally, it just always works out better. Again, like I said here, you've only got 25 damage uh, on the uh, anti-aircraft uh, weapon, so you can pretty much ignore that, uh, the anti-aircraft on this thing entirely. You then have its nerd defense system here as well, which again, it's another aircraft cannons and yeah, Locking on to nearby row is going to do you well here. Hit rate's going to help a bit. Obviously picking up, uh, you can ignore the frigate destroyer hit rate here and then picking up the double damage. It's not going to do all that much because it's only 20 damage per hit, but it's better than trying to get it to hit frigates and um, destroyers due to the fact that like most frigates destroyers sit around like a nice armor level and like mitigate half that damage anyway. So you might as well just try and buff the damage up on that a little bit. We are sat at 650 uh, cruising speed. So the best you're gonna get out of here is around 850, I think. I think it's a little bit lower than that, like 845 or something like that. But it does fit in that 850 sort of speed fleet. So you can go for the double cruising speed here to achieve that you will be losing out on the warp speed as there are only two slots available. So yeah, not a bad ship. Um, I probably underrate this a little bit more than I should. Um, 
But I do compare it to the Taurus as they both fill basically the same role, but I think the Taurus just does it a little bit better. One, energy-based weapons help it out a lot versus this. And two, it's got that innate dodge rate, uh, so it's just going to survive a little bit better than the Aldebra. Now, we also have the armor type here. This is also front row. I believe the DPM is like halved on this thing almost. Uh, not far off anyway. Um, I believe this actually boosts her around 80 armor, which is not unreasonable. And that's in sort of cruiser levels of armor on a destroyer, which is actually quite nice. You'd go about this the same way as the generic type. Um, so what you would do here, increase your health and one armor on the armor system. Then on the reinforced armor, I believe it's only armor upgrades you can get there. Again, boosting the armor up. There's no energy, um, I don't believe there's any energy increases on here, so you can ignore those. Well, you don't get a choice to ignore them, you just don't get them. This is where I think the, the Aldebra falls down a little bit. There is no way to increase its pretty, like, neglected... Uh, energy shields um, and it's the same for the defensive type which is a bit unfortunate and this is why again I think it's a weaker Taurus at the end of the day although I have to admit I do quite like the look of this ship so that's it for the Aldebra and yeah it's not a bad ship if you're missing the Taurus it definitely fills that front row off tank sort of idea that I like to use within my fleets instead of just pure dodge rate um, and it, you know it gives you extra damage that way and in case your aircraft go down because they have mistral and you don't that kind of thing you still have some damage on the board so that's why I run these sort of off tank front rows Aldebra uh, sits in my second fleet quite often uh, with my for first fleet having Tauruses and HC Eris uh, I'll have the Aldebra in my second fleet doing basically the same role uh, but yeah great ship Definitely give it a try. Uh, highly recommend it, actually. It's, it's quite good. Uh, not as good as Saurus, but it's definitely good in that position in front row. Anyway, I keep repeating myself, so that is going to be the end of the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.